Hi, this is Ashwant from Circuit Digest and in this video we'll take a look at the 4S 40 Amps BMS module. Now this module is getting increasingly popular to make battery packs like this one. So in this video we'll take a closer look at this board, understand how it works, what are its features and even do a little bit of reverse engineering to find out the circuit diagram and the components present in it and learn how the entire thing works completely. So we'll be doing three things in this video basically. First, we will get to understand the features of this board, uh, how to use it to build your own battery packs like this one. Second, we will test all the protection features that this board claims to offer and we will see how all of that works. And third, we have also removed all the components from this board and reverse engineered it and created a circuit diagram with all the part names and everything. So first thing first, let's take a closer look at our BMS module over here. So as you can see, this BMS module claims to uh, work till 40 amps and it can be used with 4S batteries and there are a lot of terminals present on it. Uh, let's start from the bottom uh, corner. We have a 0 volt, we have a 4.2 volt, we have a 12.6 volt here and we have a 8.4 volt here and 16.8 volts over here. And then we have the main terminals which is positive and negative. Now we can use this BMS module to create battery packs of uh, the 4S range. So you can make a simple battery pack like this one which is a 4S 1P battery pack meaning it has four cells in series and no cells in parallel or you can make even bigger battery packs like 4S 2P, 4S 3P extra based on your application. But this BMS module can only handle up to a 40 amps maximum continuous current. Now uh, if you want to know how to use this BMS module it's very simple you just have to build your battery pack first and then connect your first cells uh, ground potential over here and then your first cell uh, positive over here your second cells positive over here your third cells positive would go over here your fourth cells positive that is the total battery packs positive would go over here and over here you will connect your load as well as your charger now i'm not going to get into details of how exactly to build this battery pack because we have already covered all of that in part one so you will find the link of that in the description if you want to know how we have built this battery pack and how we have tested the various features present on this bms module uh, let me just for demonstration just turn this on as you can see it is in the working condition so uh, you can click the link in the description to find out how we built this and also to test the various uh, protection features that this BMS module offers. So to give you a rough intro, the BMS offers five main protection features. First thing would be over voltage, then it would be under voltage protection, then it also offers over current protection, short circuit protection, and it also provides a cell balancing feature. Now uh, in the market, you will find many boards like this one. So this one here is a 4S 40 amps BMS, which is a balanced version, but there are many other versions of the BMS in the market. You will also find a 3S or 2S BMS which might look very similar with a low number of MOSFETs. Now uh, let me show you the data sheet of this MOSFET so we'll get to understand the types of uh, this BMS and what are its main uh, specifications and functions. So this here is the data sheet of the BMS which I just showed you. Again, you can uh, see here about the complete uh, connection diagram, uh, which is the same thing which I told you earlier. Here they have given a 4S uh, 2P battery pack for demonstration. And on top, you can find that uh, this BMS has uh, three versions. Uh, if you scroll down a bit more, they, they have also given images for the balanced version and the enhanced version. The one we have with us is the balanced version. We can tell that by the resistors present over here. So this data sheet can also be found at the article which you can find in the link at the description. So this data sheet tells you a complete story about the BMS like what is its uh, self-consuming current, uh, why, when does the overcharge protection kick in, how does the self-balancing work and all those stuff. So we'll get back to this later now let's go back to the board and we will take a closer look about uh, the components present on our module now uh, this module can be split into three main categories as you can see here the first category over here which are uh, these components are used for the overcurrent 
over voltage under voltage and short circuit protection the next set of components that you can see here which is also marked here and in the image here are used for the cell balancing feature and then you see a set of 10 MOSFETs which you can see here are used to connect and disconnect your BMS with your charger or with your load say for example a motor a controller or whatnot so now to get a better understanding let's take our the look of this circuit diagram and uh, we'll try to understand how each segment works and we'll also see what IC is being used to accomplish that protection features. Now the complete circuit diagram for our BMS module can be seen over here. Now before we get here if you need more information say for example a clear image of the circuit diagram or these images you can always check out the article given at the link at the description of this video where you will find more information. So basically what we have done is we have removed all the components from this uh, BMS module. So uh, we have removed all the components and you can see the bare PCB over here and the components that we have removed and we have traced how the components were connected to each other and we have built this schematic. So as I told you earlier we can uh, categorize the schematic into three sections. One would be the cell balancing section which is this one. The other would be the over voltage, under voltage, over current and short circuit protection feature which is provided by this section over here. And the last section over here is the set of 10 MOSFETs which is used to connect and disconnect the charger or the load based on whatever fault is detected. So the thing here is that you can see a four set of these ICs. Uh, for example, this complete thing is one set and you can see that it is connected to one particular battery. So the, as I told you, this BMS is used for a 4S battery pack, that is four cells connected in series. And you can find those four cells over here. All these four cells are connected in series. And this one set over here is used to provide all the protection features for this particular cell. Now, uh, the circuit is designed in such a way that both these ICs are powered by an individual cell, that is a cell 4 in our case. So, for example, if it is a 3S BMS, you will only find these three segments and the last segment would not be there. If it is a 2S BMS, you will only find these two segments and only these two batteries. So uh, to dive in de uh, deeper, let us start with the balancing section of our circuit. I will also show you the board. So this section over here is the balancing section of our BMS, which is uh, mainly driven by the IC HY2213BB3A. Now uh, this IC is a, a cell balancing IC. Let's take a look at its data sheet to understand what it is doing in our BMS module over here. So this is the data sheet of our HY2213 uh, cell balancing battery charger balancing IC. So uh, if we scroll down to the application circuit, you will find it to be very similar to the circuit present on our BMS module. So this is the application circuit for our HY2213 IC. So basically what it does is it monitors the individual battery voltage and whenever one battery voltage is more than the other cells, it would automatically discharge it through a resistor. Now let me just quickly show you how it happens. So this resistor over here is the discharge resistor. So the IC over here is our HY2213. So this uh, IC monitors the cell voltage. Say for example, this one monitors cell 4, cell 3, cell 2 and cell 1 respectively. And if one cell's battery voltage is more than the other cells, it would discharge that battery using this drain resistor over here. Now you can also find the same information on the data sheet. If you take a look at the data sheet, when it says that it is a balanced version and it has an equalizing current of 100 milliamps meaning uh, whenever the cell voltage is higher than the other cells it will discharge the cell with 100 milliamps current uh, so that the potential is matched now if you want to see this practically in action you can refer to the other video present in the description uh, which will show you how this feature works in practice now moving on we have our next segment over here which takes care of uh, over voltage, under voltage, over current and short circuit protection. So you can find this section on our BMS over here. 
So this section is uh, mainly controlled by the IC called DW018. Now again it is the same principle each IC is connected to an individual cell. So it will be powered by that individual cell and it will also monitor that particular individual cell. So let's also take a look at the data sheet of this IC to understand how it works. So in the data sheet of this IC, you can already see at which uh, voltage your IC will kick in and uh, do its protection feature. For example, uh, whenever the IC's voltage uh, goes uh, above 4.2 volts, which is overcharge detection voltage, your uh, protection uh, IC will disconnect the charger from the cells and it will release that IC back to the charger whenever it drops below 4.050 volts. Similarly, when it is being discharged by a load, if the individual cell voltage drops below 2.4 volts, this IC will kick in and it will disconnect it from the load and it will only connect it back to the load when the over voltage release voltage, sorry, over discharge release voltage is 3 volts, meaning only when it crosses 3 volts, it will uh, release this cell to be connected to the load again. Uh, similarly, it also does over current detection, uh, which is 150 millivolts plus or minus 30. So let's take a look at the circuit diagram and see how it works. So as I told you, each IC is connected to an individual cell. So it will monitor the voltage of this individual cell. And whenever something goes wrong, it will uh, control these transistors over here and it will uh, release the batteries from the charger or from the load using the MOSFETs over here. We'll get into details of this. So before that, let's also take a look at the MOSFET section here. So since this uh, BMS module is rated for 40 amps, they have used a series of five MOSFETs in both the sizes. So we have a series of five MOSFETs here and five MOSFETs here, total a set of 10 MOSFETs, which is used to connect your BMS to your charger or to your load so as I told you earlier you will connect both your charger and your uh, load over these two terminals your positive would go here and your negative would go here so uh, as I told you earlier this ICs will be used for balancing and these ICs will be used for uh, over voltage, under voltage and over current protection feature. So whenever something goes wrong, this ICs will uh, trigger the transistors and it will trigger the MOSFETs uh, to, so that it, the load can be disconnected from the BMS. Okay, so to get a deeper understanding, let's start with how the MOSFET section works. So we have 10 MOSFETs all together. These five MOSFETs you can see here and these five MOSFETs you can see here. So these five MOSFETs here are connected in parallel so that it would be able to handle 40 amps. And similarly, these five MOSFETs are also connected in parallel so that they will be able to handle 40 amps. Now the set of these two five MOSFETs are connected in series. Now what happens here is that uh, these five MOSFETs are are controlled by your are controlled by your CO pin over here and the set of these five MOSFETs are controlled by all your DO pins in this uh, IC. So what happens is let's take a scenario for this cell. It works the same for all the cells. I'll just explain for one particular cell. Let's say uh, this cell suffers through over discharge. So what happens is if the this IC will keep monitoring the voltage of the cell and whenever it goes below the over discharge voltage which I just showed to you from the data sheet. Uh, the IC will monitor it and it will trigger this DO pin to low state. So what happens is we have a PNP transistor here. When this pin goes low, this transistor will close and hence it will trigger the transistor over here. So uh, when it triggers the transistor over here, the transistor will connect. So we have a ground potential over here, which is the total battery packs uh, negative voltage. So it will con this transistor will connect our MOSFET to our ground potential and hence the MOSFET will open. Same way, let's say uh, this particular cell is being overcharged. In that case, we have our C open which will go low and again the same story repeats we have a pnp transistor here which will close the circuit uh, 
and it will trigger these two transistors over here which will again uh, which is again connected to the ground potential and it will open this set of five mosfets so based on the over voltage or under voltage condition or the over current condition either your do pin or your co pin will get low and uh, either either one set of these mosfets will open and it will prevent your batteries from being connected to your load or to your charger now uh, if you want to understand exactly how this uh, overcharge and over discharge thing works you can again go back to the data sheet and as you can see here these are the voltage values which i told you again uh, told you before based on which your co and uh, do pin will open but if you scroll down you will find some very beautiful graphs here which exactly shows when your uh, over voltage for example we have our od pin and oc pin here so this graph here shows the over discharge condition uh, the cs pin is the pin which senses the voltage let me also just show you that so we have our uh, cs pin called as vm over here but it is basically the same so your cs pin is the pin which actually senses uh, the voltage of your cell so uh, based on what your cs pin is reading as you can see in the data sheet based on what your cs pin is reading uh, either your oc pin or your od pin will go low to uh, to save your uh, battery from overcharge or over discharge so you can look at these graphs for overcharge over discharge or over current and you can find out when your uh, oc or your od pin will get low and how your uh, ic is saving your batteries from the load or your charger so it is the same thing for how the short circuit works as well so whenever the load is short circuited your cell's voltage would decrease drastically again our cs pin in this case the vm would sense the drop in voltage and again our mosfet would be triggered uh, our mosfet would be triggered and it will save your cells from short circuit condition now again if you want to see this protection features in action we have demonstrated all of that with this battery pack over here uh, you can find the article for that as well as the video for that in the description now one more thing that you might want to know is about these two pads over here which says uh cd and afd over here so these two pads are nothing but the ones that you see here so uh, if you are uh, testing this bms and if you want to know which mosfet is being closed or open you can actually probe this so this two pin is connected to the gate of uh, the set of two mosfets over here so uh, that is it guys this is pretty much how this bms module works now i was not able to dig deep in and tell you how exactly uh, or what exactly these two transistors here or uh, some other passive components here are doing but i think this would pretty much cover most of the important stuff if you feel that some of the important things are missed out do let me know in the comment section and i will add it to the article or even redo the video based on that so that's it thanks for watching have a nice day thank you bye bye